Aloha, and welcome back to this magnificent wildcard winning version of the pa Ohana Packers Edition podcast. The podcast where two dudes talk everything green and gold from halfway around the world. I'm sorry, the intro is all jumbled because, Joe, I can't friggin' believe what just happened on that yeah, no kidding. And Jerry wheeled. Um, Joe, the Packers are moving on. Yes, I know, to face the 49ers, but they won in a way that I don't think anybody really picked the Packers to win in Jerry world today. How are you doing? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really don't know what to say. Cause it just, I I've said all along, it's all, you know, house money, but you know, my pessimistic side is, you know, the more we keep going along, the more Joe Barry is sticking around type deal. And uh, it just, I, I don't know. It's, it's exciting. Don't get me wrong from the fan perspective. It's exciting. There are some things that still need to be worked on, but you know, you can't, the, at least on the offensive side, the ball things were a well-oiled machine. I think there was maybe a couple of, uh, misplays, but yeah, it just, you can't not or you can't say anything bad about that side just because it other than the bane of my existence got friggin snaps there at the end of the game but you know that's a whole another issue there but um yeah they did great and unfortunately the draw is going to San Francisco next week but you know, Jordan Love has has a chance to do the funniest thing in the world, and that's take out Dallas one week and take out the 49ers the next week. But, you know, that's kind of putting the cart before the horse. Let's let's just enjoy what we can for now. Absolutely. That's like you said, anything they did, anything positive they would have accomplished in the playoffs was just all gravy and by golly, did the Packers do that? Starting off on offense, that's really the story of the game, honestly. The Packers took a, what was, like I said, like what we said in our preview, a very good Cowboys defense, fifth overall in DVOA, and they just shoved them in a locker from really the opening kickoff. Um, the run game took a little bit of time to get going, but Love made some absolutely key plays on the opening drive. Uh, to extend that and allow them to get down into the into the red zone. And Aaron Jones just took it home from there on their first two drives. Um, just excellent play from Love. He would have had a perfect passer rating in his first start if Joe Barry didn't sieve away the first, uh, another touchdown too quickly. And LaFleur was like, damn it, I got to get Love back in the game. But um, again, like I said about this outcome, I had hopes that Jordan would find success, but man, oh man, I did not see him flirting with a perfect passer rating and just having a clean bill of health game for the Packers today. How about you? Well, I, I don't know if we can say a clean bill of health just because there are some things that I, I think are going to have to be looked at to see how bad they are. But Oh, no, I'm I, just talking I, about Love's game. Just Love's okay. game. But that's what you're talking um, about, yeah. I I definitely didn't think it was he was going to have the game he needed or he had. I thought he was going to be able to do just enough because we all thought this vaunted, you know, Dallas defense was just going to eat this young team alive, but it just seemed I I don't know, it just seemed destiny to to take out McCarthy and the Cowboys, but yeah, Love really had a – early on it was – I'm stumbling over words because I'm still not even sure what really happened. But <laughs> um, they uh, they did kind of what I said one of the keys was going to be in our preview. They didn't do it the way I thought would set them up, but they still – they they took the ball and they drove down the field and they got they put the first points on the board. I said, and along with some of the game on guys said that, you know, maybe they needed to go for that home run ball, you know, just hit, get that quick hitter deep and, and go from there. But 
you know, they had a steady drive. Aaron Jones did start, you know, picking apart the front line. I didn't get a chance to pay attention. Did Hankins go today? He did. Um, I don't know what the snap counts were, but we'll and we'll get into it. But Jones had a really good day on the ground, and the O line did too. But we'll, like I said, we'll cap that later. Well, and he even did it a lot on the outside. You know, he was getting he was feeding a little bit more on the outside. Now I have to preference this to like the first quarter and maybe partial in the second quarter, I didn't get a chance to watch all of it. I got called into work today. So, you know, I, I had to watch a little bit on there and then it, it kind of sucked having a three thirty game start because I get off at four. So that only gave me like, you know, half hour to be able to watch it. And then I have a 25 minute drive home. So I had to listen to Wayne and Larry on the way home. And then of course, you know, the radio is like, five, 10 minutes behind the TV. So by the time I got into the house, you know, everything that I'm hearing on the radio is already, it uh, happened on the TV. So I didn't catch all of the first part. I, I did catch where love did get sacked once. I can't remember who nailed him. Was it, did Parsons get him or was it somebody else? Um, I think it was Demarcus Lawrence, but that sack got wiped out because there was a whole, there was a, um, uh, what was it? Illegal contact, legal contact, or a hold on the play? So okay, um, officially, Love was not sacked on the day. Okay, but anyway, you know he had a great rhythm with his receivers. We might as well jump into it. Romeo Dobbs had his best game ever. I, I don't know. He might have had a better game when he was a pee wee or something. But I mean, this was his has to be best, his best as a pro. Game absolutely. Ever. Yeah. Well, did he have a better one in college though? Uh, definitely in college, but as a in the NFL, he has not had this good of a game. Okay, uh, well maybe the only one that I, might have I, come close is um the New England game last year. Well, no, I know this is the yeah. best one for pros, but yeah. with the stats he was putting up, I would think this would be like his best like ever. Yeah, let but me that's something we'd have that. to look into. But yeah, I, I mean, for a guy that everybody for the longest time was calling a a fifth wide receiver you know he really showed that he's got number one potential to him and this is one of the first times that we've seen him really like get yak and you know just uh create big plays um in the passing game but i well, think damn he's it, just why, hell- mike what do we keep saying year one is your, your learning year year two is yep. when you start putting it together and year three is when you become a star and yep. we're right at that edge of year two, year three. So he's starting to put it together. Yep. Uh, I, I'm glad we got to see Christian Watson play a little bit. I think he had just the one catch. Yep, just the one catch. Okay, but it looked like the hammy was holding up because he was fighting for yards on that catch. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Dobbs looked amazing. And, and really... I, and like I said, I think he really started solidifying himself as a top three in the for on the roster. Not saying he's top three in the league, but yeah, what'd you find? No, and I've said it all season long. Um, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, Wicks might end up being the better guy. Watson is the more explosive player. Uh, Reed is a more explosive player. But when it comes down to it, Dobbs is the guy that Love has total, complete trust in. In any game situation and in gotta have it plays we've seen it all season you know he's thrown um the 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 go-ahead touchdown against the saints was a jump ball to dobbs he threw the fourth down uh fourth down pass against the lions in week four to dobbs um he threw that fourth down almost prayer to dobbs against kansas city and then today um you know his first couple catches were uh, second reaction plays where you know he had to kind of mirror love moving out of the pocket and um just stay in uh stay in frame with that proper relationship so that love can see him and throw a, a ball that's not going to be danger of being tipped up or intercepted so just a great day you know you can't go better than six for six with a 25 yard uh average and honestly his touchdown is what killed his he, i think he was averaging over 30 per catch because the touchdown was only like for three yards. So just a great day for Dobbs. Wicks continued, you know, he didn't have as much um, targets, but he was two for two. 
And his second one was a friggin' doozy. He left Stefan Gilmore, former defensive player of the year. Pretty sure he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, he left him grasping for air and with his jock strap around his ankles on his touchdown on the touchdown that Wicks caught. And then kind of going into it, the tight ends were also effective. You know, Tucker, yeah, it would have been great if he had the uh, catch on the final throw that Love had, but I, I appreciate they went for it. But I thought his two catches, especially the third down reception he had earlier in the game were key. And then Musgrave had... You know, early had a couple um, key plays. I think his first catch just made it like second and short after a penalty. His second reception converted a third down on one of Love's only bad throws of the game. That one looked like it got away from him. And I mean, I tweeted it. I said, good thing Musgrave is 6'6", because he, he was, that throw looked like it was going into the first deck and Musgrave didn't even have to jump for it. And then the touchdown, they ran... Dusty Evely's favorite play. They ran tight end leak. Love got pressured, threw up another punt. It kind of looked like the play from week one at Chicago, except to the other side of the field. And this time Musgrave didn't get a calf cramp and was able to um, keep his feet and actually run through a tackle attempt and get into the end zone. So, yeah, but Love almost still uh, had not the greatest throw because Musgrave had to readjust there. Uh, he was getting it. smoked as he threw it. So uh, I'll, right. I'll give no, him a break know, on that but... one. Yeah. <laughs> But it just it goes to show that those two still haven't had perfect timing on anything yet. They've either <laughs> Love either missed him or Musgraves has had to readjust to the pass on it. So it just yeah. hopefully you know it, it it'll get worked out and you know between him honestly and Kraft, that one that's another one of those the route combination and the co against the coverage the Cowboys were in. It's one of those where arm punts are safe and. I, I give Musgrave all the credit of the world because as someone who played receiver before, those are the absolute worst plays to have to convert because that ball feels like it's up there for years at a time and every thought goes through your mind. You're, you're like, what am I going to do? How am I going to – like that's the problem is you start to do that. How do I want to catch this? Am I going to jump? And do you I can let tell he was to doing that yeah. too. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good on him for catching it getting regetting his balance and like i know that's one of the ones that we've everyone's kind of been on him for but he turned around and he got through a tackle attempt and made his way into the end zone so he got through a tackle <laughs> <laughs> it was on the one yard line but hey it counts <laughs> it counts it, 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 it doesn't matter it counts he got through a tackle <laughs> so i i was surprised on that one too but it really looks like that we may have a heck of a uh, tight end tandem going forward as long as you know everybody stays healthy and then yeah. whatnot. And uh, the, but the backbone of it all, like we talked about in the preview, is this O line absolutely cooked the Dallas front seven. They just took control of the game. Like I said, it took them a, a few plays to get traction, but man, when it, any play that it mattered, they they just eliminated Dallas from the play. Um, they did what we hoped they would. They ran at Micah Parsons early and often, uh, took his and the rest of that pass rush's legs away. Jordan made enough movement plays to get outside of the pocket to um, extend and create bigger plays. And then after that, Jones just absolutely eviscerated them. And I, I have it in the notes here. The tight ends also contributed to, to that. Kraft had a good day blocking. I know he has the holding penalty on his, it's going to be on his name, but really that's on Jones. Kraft has that block manned up and he's not expecting Jones to bounce it outside that far. So, um, and he tried to let go of it, but it was just a little bit too late and especially against Parsons. So, well, um, and Jones had some weird cuts a lot too. Early he, in the game, early yeah, in the game, he, he's, his vision wasn't super great. It, it did seem like he was kind of, um, it looked like he was just missing some reads, but as the game got going, he looked much more sure of himself and kudos was really on to, top of it. Kudos to Rasheed Walker on smoking Aaron Jones, though. That was a hell of a hit. <laughs> Woke him up. It was like it was better than the smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> I think pro football doc said helmet to helmet hit by his own teammate early in the game. And I'm just glad that Jones looks like he's so explosive. And not just explosive, but you can tell he's feeling good overall because he's able to knife his way around and in between blockers, he's 
you know, he's getting the ball at full speed and he's tilting his shoulders sideways to, as they say, get skinny in the hole. And it just creates so many problems for opposing defenses. And the thing I'm happiest that they did is I know they put him back in at the end, but I think that was to sell the play action is they did get him out of the game when it was going. Uh, it was, you know, just the landslide portion of it and kind of took, you know, some, I want to say six to 10 unnecessary hits off of his body. So that was really good management. Well, let's face it. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but you know, they put him back in because Joe Barry went soft on defense again. And that's yeah. something I do want to touch on when we hit the defensive side, <laughs> but kudos to the O-line. They, they answered the bell and it doesn't get any easier from here. All San Fran did was continue to add weapon horses to their front seven. We'll talk about it more um, on Wednesday night show, but just a great, great game on the road. I know that you know Packer fans are going to joke about Jerry World being a home stadium too, but it is a road environment, um, and they just had an excellent, excellent game. Like I said, just three quarterback hits, no sacks that counted, and love – comes out of this game looking spry and healthy. So, and that goes into uh, j- just encompassing it all. Matt LaFleur called a hell of a game. And yeah. I did take a shot during the game that this was the first time I feel like we really saw all gas, no fucking break. And so it kind of makes you wonder, ooh, like, was that Matt trying to prove something just for himself? Was he... Proving something else, we'll you know we'll leave that up to everyone's own opinion. But I appreciated that he at no point turtled. You know that was kind of the concern is you can't trust that guy who's calling your defense to not just go soft, soft. So I appreciate that Matt put the pedal down and kept scoring touchdowns as often as he could and just absolutely rocked the baby away in this one. So great game from the floor. I didn't care for the challenge he threw. Um, if you wanted to disrupt Dallas's momentum, just call a timeout or something. But um, I thought that was one of those like, ah, whatever, everything's working. I'm just going to challenge this one. But on the replay I saw, I was like, that one's pretty obvious, Matt. So, But okay, almost everything else came up roses for the Packers today. And it was just an A++ day for the offense. And, you know, they're... <laughs> They're hopefully they're they're probably not gonna have another one of these in the playoffs, no matter how deep they go. But it was just so good to see that from this offense. You know, first playoff game for Jordan Love, first game for Lafleur calling a playoff game for Jordan Love, and he just used every bullet in his belt, and it all came up roses today. Well, the only one on the offensive line that I think wasn't. And I don't want to say he wasn't good. I just think he had his bad moments was when Sean Ryan went in. And there were a few times that I heard Larry McCarron on the way when I was on my way home say something about Sean Ryan. And it was usually he missed an assignment or whatever. So, you know, you got to think he's still a work in progress because he missed all last year because of different stupid things. And, you know, he doesn't get full playing time this year. But. You know, it looked like everybody else played well. Rashid held up pretty decently against Dexter Lawrence or Demarcus Lawrence. Sorry, uh, Myers Zach Tom was uh, elite. Yeah, um, Myers surprisingly he had his one against... rough snap, and he, then he was good the rest of the game. I thought on initial view, but I, I was going to say he held up against Parsons because that was the big thing that Parsons did was he'd line up over the center and, you know, however you, I, I don't know the technical terms, but one of the big things was he'd go through one gap and then immediately, you know, jump cut and go through the yep. other gap. So it, it really seemed like Myers and the interior guys held up pretty good, like Runyon and, and, and Jenkins. So, yeah, I think this is probably the best overall offensive line game in a while. Yeah. So just one penalty on the O line that wasn't accepted, and I have no problem with Jenkins on it. Um, he got beat by one of those uh plays where Parsons starts in the A gap and he basically jumps out into the C gap, and Jenkins just got caught a little bit flat footed on that one. And honestly, just I'm totally okay with him hog tying a pass rusher who's gonna have him just beat with a B line to love. Yeah, Larry I'll, I'll said take the that same every thing. Day. Yeah, Larry I'll take McCarran that every day said of the, the week. same thing. 
don't yep. you know if you're going to get called for the penalty you might as well not let him hit your quarterback on the way you know on doing it so yeah exactly so great game from the o line great game from lafleur and shifting gears great start for Barry and his defense first half we'll give him the first half <laughs> Big, big, um, and I know some people are going to say you're just hating, but the turnovers were excellent plays by Jair, who we hope is okay, and Darnell Savage. Darnell, from his, from the robber spot, which is where he made his hay in uh, the late 2020 season and parts of 2021 where it looked like, yeah, we've got another great safety. Darnell Savage reads that slant pattern and just steps right in front of it to take that play to the house. And then Jair... Did you see Keyshawn, though? When when Savage was returning the the pick, Keyshawn almost caught up with him. <laughs> I think he, I think Savage just put it into coast because he knew that there was no one in in white that was going to catch up to him on coast. But there was a lot of ground Keyshawn had to cover. Oh he yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, he just ran it like he was running a kickback. Honestly, like <laughs> so. Um, and Jair, his play. I saw some Dallas people say like that's pi, and it's like. It's like Blandino said, and even um, Olsen said, is like, no, he's inside of him. He has every right to that spot on the field. And if he just out physicals his way into that spot, that's his right. And he just muscled Brandon Cooks. I don't know what it is, but when he sees the name Cooks on the back of a jersey, he turns into superhero. So <laughs> hopefully, um, hopefully Jair is okay. You know, it didn't look good when it happened, but um, it was definitely but him trying to stop on a dime to come up and um make a tackle on a short pass but when they he didn't had the look shot like of him he was, on the sideline yeah, yeah exactly. I was gonna say he, looked, he didn't look like he was hobbling he looked at more all, like so. he looked more like he was relieved because he was kind of like yeah he, they someone came to pat him on the shoulder and he was kind of like no no like we're good and obviously there's adrenaline in the moment and stuff but it's good that he never got taken to the locker room and came back out in a sweater or anything like that it's good that they Kind of just said like, okay, we're we're up enough. Let's just that was enough of a spook, and let's just let's just put in Valentine and ride out the rest of the game at this point. But look, so. you can also say that the defense dropped three other interceptions. So this I know one of them wouldn't account because different. there was a penalty. But yeah, the um, they would have shut out Dallas in the first half if Devondre holds on to that one. Um, I. I, you know, some people are saying, oh, like he, but I'm like, he's a linebacker and he is right. reaching all the way out. It's, it's not a routine play for him kind of thing. I, I would have loved to have seen him make it, but, um, I, it would have just been icing on would, the cake. Yeah. So, and then you're right. There was a couple more. I think Valentine almost got smoked on his one because he waited for the ball to come down when he should have jumped for it. Um, the one that CD had, I, I think if he, palmed it he would have been in bounds on that one and that would have made the game yeah. a little too interesting and then the other one would have been a, um i think it was ballantine but that one was coming back for penalty anyway so um but yeah just everyone and that's the thing is like i didn't want to say it in the preview because it just felt like that would be throwing too many flowers at barry's feet and we all know what happens when we put too many expectations on him but realistically this is the kind of passing attack you'd like to think Barry's defense is good against because Dallas likes to push the ball deep and it is the whole like psyching out of the opponent where it's like we're gonna play umbrella coverage we're gonna take that away and we're gonna let you hit everything underneath and I think Dak took too long to come off of deep routes to come onto shorter routes and by the time he did he was inaccurate um, or just was seeing pressure and was just off with throws and stuff. And I think he even got bailed out by Jake Ferguson on one where he threw it over the tip of uh, Quay Walker's finger. Quay almost made an unbelievable play to tip that pass. And uh, it took Ferguson stretching out with all of his arm length to get the hand, his two hands on that one to reel it in. So, um, Okay, so timeout yeah. real quick. I want to give an update because I was going to look up stats. The Lions are ahead 14-3 at the end of the first quarter. So we're, we're, we're going to give just a quick break. I know this won't come out until like two days after uh, the game's over, but as we're recording, the Lions are up 14-3 to over the Rams. Yep. Rams are driving, though. Um, 
Ravens have first and 10 on their own 41. But, um, yeah, you know, everything went Green Bay's way outside of, okay, I've never explained this on the pod, but my whole thing is I'm not going to complain about officiating in a loss unless it's egregiously horrible. <laughs> hint, hint, um, replacement refs. But yeah. that play that Dallas scored on at the end of the half was you have two refs. The head ref and the umpire are behind the center to protect the quarterback. Um, Tyler Smith's ass moves six inches up in the air clearly before the ball is snapped. And it's clear as day because Dak has that dumbass long snap count call and you don't call it. And yet you call a horse collar tackle that's not a horse collar tackle. You somehow have the eyesight to see Kenny grasp um, Dak's face mask with a finger. And yet you miss that blatant false start at the end of the half. But I'm well, just and mostly then they salty missed, because uh... of... They missed a face mask on the one they called um, Inigbari for a hold, but it was also a yeah. face mask. Well, by no, the tight not end. just yeah. that one, but it was, uh, I want to say it was on one of the Jones runs where he got turned backwards and the guy came over the top and oh, ripped him. I think you're right. And... Yeah. But, but honestly, I, I just gave up. I, they never call face masks on defenders tackling Aaron Jones. I, I, I think we've seen one, and it was literally because he got pulled down by his face mask. Otherwise, yeah. he's just he's immune to having face mask penalties called in his favor. So I'll get off the soapbox on that one. But the first half, from a defensive point of view, went about as well. And the, the Lions secondary just got absolutely cooked. So it's about to be hopefully 14-10 Deron uh, Detroit. Who? Deron who? <laughs> yeah, like we said, Deron Bland. He had he had an excellent statistical season, but a lot of that was smoke and mirrors, and it's almost poetic justice that he had it in place of Trevon Diggs, who is also the most overrated cornerback in the <laughs> game because all he does is catch overthrows because he's six foot two and his pass rush is good. But anytime that these corners are in a situation where they have to just play coverage and their pass rush isn't working, they get exposed almost every single time. And you knew it was bad because even Stephon Gilmore had a bad game. So, um, well, it it reminds me of the Dallas guy that, or the Cowboy in the Super Bowl that had like three interceptions. One Larry Brown, uh, yeah, yeah, won, won the uh, Super Bowl MVP, got a big contract, and did nothing. Well, you know, it goes to show that interceptions aren't everything when you play across from Deion Sanders, especially, <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah. it it just let, now I have to say that like I said, it's really surprising that the Packers did what they did against the Cowboys. Just because for one, the Packers are in the number seven seed for a reason. You know, they had the, the Cowboys they, in turn are the two seed for a reason too. They, you know, we're gonna have our fun. Mainstream media is going to have their fun, but the Cowboys were a dominant team. They didn't lock their... Okay, maybe a little bit. You can talk about that Detroit game, but they were perfect at home for a reason, and Green Bay absolutely turned the tables on them on every side of the ball, and you're right. And, and I just right want to take that. this moment to say, Jerry, don't fire McCarthy. He's probably been the best head coach you guys have had for the longest time. Since Jimmy, honestly. Yeah, like so... If you get rid of him, that'll be the stupidest thing you've ever done. Since firing and that's Jimmy. Saying, yeah, yeah <laughs> and that's staying something for Jerry Jones. So I know he's not happy with the results right now. I know the rumors were flying around that if McCarthy didn't get a playoff win, that he was going to be out the door. But you got to give him a chance. I, I know you may be losing your defensive coordinator because he'll get a head coaching opportunity but you can't let him go. So, all right, that's enough for me stumping for Mike McCarthy. <laughs> but, yeah, just honestly, the the part of this game that it's hard to quote-unquote believe in is the turnover luck. And like I said, Green Bay did create those. It's not like, you know, it was a tip, you know, the, like the quadruple tip drill that happens to go to Green Bay. Jair created that off of the whip route. 
Savage read that slant play correctly and stepped in front of it. And how, you know, and I got to take this victory lap. I got to take this victory lap as the one guy in the 50 states of, as a Packers fan who never gave up on Darnell Savage. And Darnell, I don't know if you watch or listen to this show, but I want you to know that I never gave up on you. Your jersey is still the only Packers jersey that Marisol has. And I am so happy that for for the first time in a, what feels like a long time, Darnell, it feels like since the 2020 NFC Championship game, it's been Darnell is there, but he's so close, it, but no cigar kind of thing. Couldn't break up the one arm putt from Brady in the NFC Championship game. Earlier this season, he had the one where he got absolutely roofed by uh, Drake London on the flea flicker play. And he had a couple others. Um, I think one of the plays he got hurt against the Raiders. It was kind of a similar deal um, against the Broncos. That's when he re-aggravated his calf injury. It's been a rough year for him. I know he's, you know, hope. I still think he could have a future here. But I'm just so glad that if that's the last great highlight moment I have of Darnell Savage, I want you to know Mike Kawano. This nobody fan in Honolulu, Hawaii, never gave up on you, man. And I'm so happy that you got your pick six in such a big moment of this game. And there's our TikTok clip. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like I said, turnover luck, there, there, there is a little bit of a smoke and mirrors element to what Green Bay's defense did. But I do think it gets taken away or dim, that turnover, quote unquote, luck gets diminished some because, like I said, it's not like they it's not like Dak threw it right to someone. They Jair and Savage created those turnovers. Yeah. And at the same time, <laughs> I tweeted it in the first half. I was like, there is no place a Packers fan is more concerned about being than up more than one score in the first half of a game. <laughs> and I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. It came damn near close at the end of the game to making this game way too interesting past what it should have been. But the the guys on the field, the guys who matter, made just enough plays to <laughs> to make sure that Joe couldn't give this one away again. So kudos well, to um, all the guys. This is where I'm going to get on my soapbox, okay? <laughs> When you're up by as much as you were up by, I, I can't even remember what was it. It was 48 to uh, 32, or it was 32 points at one point, basically. Yeah. So I understand you don't want to take the risk with your starters, beings that you've got, you know, another game to play, but that doesn't mean you play soft. You're going to take an injury risk no matter what you do, anytime you step on the field. You're going to take an injury risk. Nick, I love you, buddy. You're you're the original co-host of this show. But that's where I disagree with you. I understand your thought process behind it. But your defense is having, your, having its way with this Dallas team that nobody, that everybody thought was going to just dominate the Packers. That doesn't mean all of a sudden you just quit and let the let it get back to where it was. Dak eventually went for almost four hundred friggin' passing yards. Gross yards, uh, and, and he did. Of, yeah. I know they're uh, garbage time yards, no, but they he still did go matter. Four hundred. Yeah, he went forty-one for sixty for four hundred and three yards. Yeah, that's Net not yards acceptable. Is less because he got sacked four times. Right, but that's still not acceptable. I mean, yeah. I don't care what it is. You're a playoff team. You're kicking the shit out of the number two seed from a, the number seven seed. You don't just stop. Yeah. Especially, like I said, when you're having your way with them. Yeah, you can go to the your backups, but that doesn't mean you just play soft. Yeah. They're, the Cowboys' last touchdown drive was way too easy. Um, I get, like, I agree with you that you know you're you're playing. Um, their starters are still again are still in against your reserves. You know we Zane Anderson plays defense. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to give him had, credit. He had a hell of a hit on special teams, and we'll get to that in a he minute. He did. But. He did. But um, you know you cannot give up a four play drive. That that is just un like you said. That is absolutely unacceptable. Um, I don't care that it's still a two possession game after that, but. 
allowing Dallas to go four plays for 91 yards in a minute 24, that is absolutely unacceptable. Well, they did it Uh, twice because they had two easy touchdowns at the end of the game. At least, the uh, yeah, and that one too. I I know some people were like, oh, but it was an 11-play drive, but Ross Oglum was right. Like, uh, it doesn't matter when one of those, you know, one of those plays goes for, what did it go for? It went for too much, too much, way too much and way too easy. And then the touchdown itself, too. I, I will say Especially that. Especially to Barry Al- Alvarez's grandson. You can't let that <laughs> shit happen. <laughs> oh, that's aggravating. I know. But, yeah. Um, just At least it wasn't a Michigan player. <laughs> no, that tight end doesn't get snaps for the Cowboys. <laughs> Although I thought it was him that got one of the touchdowns, so. I, I I sweated it there because it, it's bad enough that they got a Wisconsin guy over there. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, it's hard to take Barry too much to task, but I'm with you. All we have to say is that the same warts are still there. They just got paper mache over by the fact that they got, you know, they won the two turnover battle two to nothing, stopped Dallas on downs. Um, twice in the game so that's for all intents and purposes that's two more turnovers but you still gave up 500 yards and that's with and so i know that it's in blowout situation but you have an offense that runs at one of the slowest i forget where exactly but they are one of the slowest paced offenses so what that means is they take their time they run the play clock down not like Rodgers used to, but, you know, they, they go to the huddle. They don't just run up to the line of scrimmage unless they're trying to tempo the other team to death. Um, and you still just kind of let it happen. And like you said, I get that Jair gets hurt, but you cannot play this game scared. The acceptable amount is that you got Jair off the field. That's, that's yes, that's fine. You cannot let Jair go back in the game at that point. But the fact that Lafleur took Love out, put Sean Clifford in, had Emmanuel, had not even Emmanuel Wilson. He put Patrick Taylor in. He put the double, he had the victory cigar coming out both sides of his mouth, and he had to go cut the ends off of those because Joe Barry let the Pat, the Cowboys score in four plays and a minute 24 well, of game time. Well, on top time. of that, he took out Elton Jenkins and John Runyon and was playing yep. Royce Newman and... Sean Ryan and had to take Newman out to move Ryan over to put Runyon back in. So that's where I'm saying this whole point is, is yeah, it's nice to be able to take your starters out and not play them. But when your defense goes soft and you're starting to give up points, they got to go back in. Yep. And the one that I got, you know, that, you know, some people are kind of like, oh, like, why would you throw? I was like, okay, one, Tucker's got to catch the ball there. I know it's a little bit outside, but yeah. catch the ball, Tucker. He but, was looking too far upfield. Yeah. And why is LaFleur throwing? Because he doesn't want his defense back on the field. Yeah. So, like, Tucker would have had the, the easy game. first down, but the throw was a little off. He was looking upfield before he secured the catch. Yeah. Otherwise we wouldn't even be talking about it because he would have yeah. got the first down and there, there's no issues there. Yeah. So, and that goes, that kind of flows into well, the run defense was solid. I, I do have it in the notes here. I do think this is one of the Packers best tackling games in a long time. I, yeah, I can agree with I that. I think there was one play where I, I tweeted like, come on, Keyshawn, you have two arms, use both of them. Um, but other than that, I thought, and I thought that, you know, some people are going to be like, oh, they kind of were holding them up. You know, they, they let Dallas kind of gain yards. But I think at that point they were up so far that they were like, let's just try to strip it every chance we get. Cause the Cowboys are going to be fighting for extra yards. So let's let them and let's see if we can create some more turnovers. So yeah. I don't really have issues with that. When the game was really in hand, their tackling was on point And I was really happy with how they tackled. That's going to be an absolute key for next week is obviously Shanahan is going to scheme up a lot of stuff. Um, he's going to call a bunch of exotic screens and long developing pass plays and They've got to be able to set the edge in the run game. That's going to be the key next week is they have to be. I, I think that they're able to stone the middle of San Fran's line because 
outside of Trent Williams, that line is not special in any way, shape, or form. It's the fact that Shanahan is so good at, at scheming up ways to get their playmakers the ball in space, whether it's McCaffrey on uh, outside zone runs, uh, Kittle on anything, and Debo also on anything. It's it's a matter of you've got to be able to control what you can control and make them drive the field. And we saw Barry have success with that twice in 2021. Um, but the key of it all, and we'll go into this more on Wednesday's show, is the key of it all is they've got to continue to tackle well. And hopefully this is a sign of things to come for them. The big question is going to be what are Ja and to a, a lesser ex- – well, I won't say lesser because McDuffie was kind of a starter tonight. So hopefully Ja and McDuffie are okay. It kind of looks like McDuffie might have gotten away with just a stinger, so hopefully he's all right. But yeah, but good that's not good spell. after just coming off of a concussion. Yeah, so, so we'll see I, where I they're just, at, and we'll, we'll talk about that all on the snaps. preview. <laughs> yeah, might be time for some Welch snaps at linebacker, but there you um, go. it was a somewhere between a good and enough and a solid game by the defense. Like I said, it and Russ Uglum says it all the time. Barry is going to do what Barry does. It's up to the 11 guys on that defense to make plays. And today, those 11 guys that were on the field made more than enough plays to turn this game into a, just a, sh- a blowout for the Packers. So great job by the defense. Darnell, do it again, baby. I still going to always believe in you. <laughs> but, um, from one guy who we never have faith in to a guy that maybe we should have had more belief in, Joe. <laughs> Did did Rich Basaccia play the long con with the Packers all season? Did, did, well, I know I know they had the one bad kick return that they allowed, and um, on they were getting some off, punt, off, right? yeah, and they were getting but, a little bit of punt return yards, uh, not a lot. This kick but return, they were... kick return yards. They actually Whelan, Whelan Oh yeah, was that's right. Yeah, the yeah, best yeah, yeah. part because all I know his you know you can't just look at his average because he was p- kicking with short fields. But every one of his punts was downed or fair caught inside the 20. And I think two of them were inside the 10. So just a really good game from Whelan. Again, well, I'm gonna... not going to see him in bad weather. But... <laughs> I'm going to answer your question, but I want to go back to something real quick. Because it's a big thing that I don't think we really touched on when we were talking about offense. But, you know, it's amazing that all these guys got r- catches and the receiving yards and everything. But the real shock value is Jaden Reed didn't get anything. And they were trying to feed him a throw at the end of the game. Like, Well, they, they tried to I, feed him a couple different ones. Yeah. But but it's just amazing that the guy that is our up-and-coming star, we didn't need him. And this is where I go back to this is what the receiving core looked like when Rodgers first took over, was yep. you didn't need that one guy every game. You could, you could target multiple people and not lose a step. At the end of the season, Greg Jennings would end up with twelve hundred yards and twelve touchdowns because he was that good. But it was all, like you said, it was all within the flow of the offense. And um, you, like you said, this week wasn't a big Jaden Reed game, but maybe next week will be. The big thing that we got from the Packers today, and I think why Dobbs had such a good game, why Wicks had the touchdown he had is because you have a healthy to some level of healthy enough to be out there and not like get hurt during the game. You had healthy Luke Musgrave, healthy Jaden Reed, healthy Christian Watson. That the fact that the Packers have three legitimate deep threats allows guys like Wicks and Dobbs who and are Bo able Melton. To get, yeah, and Bo Melton. Yes, exactly. Sorry. Don't mean to erase your Bo Melton, but you have four guys who run low four fours or four threes or faster. Two or three guys, sorry, and then Musgrave runs a four, the equivalent of a four three for a tight end, you know, for all intents and purposes. It puts the fear of God in a defensive coordinator. And it was kind of funny because what did it for Green Bay and what Dallas wasn't willing to do is Love was perfectly fine throwing underneath the coverage and Dobbs ate it up all game. He was the benefactor of. I think they were sending, you know, some combination of two guys were running deep on every play, taking the top off, you know, and Quinn is from that same philosophy. He's more of a cover three guy, but he's like, we're not giving up the big play. 
and and love was like fine i got romeo i got romeo and i got love and all i got is i'm just gonna put the ball on him and i know he's gonna catch it so 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 let me ask you so love was basically saying romeo oh romeo where art thou for a romeo oh yes absolutely (laughs) i'm sorry that was horrible i no no yeah that that was horrible and i i i want to say it's it's one of those it's a part of the game plan but the funny thing is next week against the 49ers you have to do the opposite. You have to be willing to stretch their defense deep. We'll yeah. go, like we said, we'll go into that on Wednesday's game. But, but I, I just wanted to point out that it, no, Reed didn't see I'm, anything. Yeah, so and that's it, where it I'm just, a little surprised that I'm, – I'm a little more surprised that you didn't see more of Kraft getting – but when when Dobbs is going six for six for 150, like, that's fine. You you know, that's who's getting it kind of thing. But, um, but anyway, yeah. back to the special teams – I, I don't know. They they really shocked the hell out of me with special teams because coverage was amazing. Uh, Anders was putting it out of the back of the end zone on, on kickoffs. He did have the doink, but even, I don't know. I, 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 I couldn't tell you what it, it yet, so we'll, Yeah, we'll I was going to say, I, I'd have to rewatch it to see how the mechanism, whole the whole mechanism went. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Maybe it wasn't it is, a horrible It's what we've point. said all year. Yes, it's not good that he's missing them, but he is not snowballing after it and letting that one mistake become multiple mistakes. Yeah, and I have it in the notes here. We cannot leave points on the field next week. They're going to need any and every point they can get their hands on against the 49ers. They're going to need it to get up on the scoreboard under GB. But the most important thing for the Packers is that they – is that – Love or not love. Anders did not let a mistake become a problem. Yeah, he, like you said, and I do think, and the the reason that I joked about the long con for Basachi is yes, there was the bad return. I think it was the it was the kickoff after Darnell's um interception return, but so Anders had some where he was kicking it into the end zone, but he was also doing that thing where he's kicking it like to the one or one yard into the end zone. And they did get Kevante Turpin to get it a little bit too high on his horse and um, get himself into trouble trying to return something he maybe shouldn't have. So um, that's where I was kind of joking with the it's the long con. Uh, the Rams have just come back and scored again. Um, it's a back and forth here. Uh, it's still in the first half. But yeah. Um, I, do we dare throw out there that maybe Green Bay is peaking at the right time? <laughs> we'll get into that in the preview on Wednesday, but so many things turned up roses. And I, I know that the the more likely reality is they played their best game of the season and they're going to get somewhere between disappointed and curb stomped against the 49ers next well, week. Do you but, know off the top of your head, this is the first time they scored 48 in how long? In the playoffs? I mean, I, period. Um... What were their scores? It's been in a few years, hasn't it? Yeah, hold on. It. I know they definitely did in 2020. Um, 45 against the Bears in 21. Uh, well, I mean, that would probably be the last time they scored 40, period. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they scored 41 against the, the Vikings last year. Okay, so that's the last four. Uh, oh no, sorry, forty-one this season. That was this season's forty-one. Okay, uh, so yeah, I mean, they almost I, had a fifty-one out there. Yeah. yeah, they they could have went fifty-one. I, I wish they kind of would have, but that that would have been even better. But I, the this team, I, I we've said it all year. It's all house money right now, and win, lose, whatever. It, it's a exciting future that that's ahead. Let these guys get another year underneath them. There is going to be a little bit of money in the coffers to be able to fill some spots on top of the draft picks that they have. So I, the, the one bad part about having all these targets is Malik Heath was a healthy scratch this week. So we didn't get another Heath uh, catch, but, you know, that's 
that's a, a good thing to have those have too many guys that you can't have all out on the field at one time. Yep. And they're just staying multiple on offense. <sighs> can't say, you know, this is one of those games that, okay. I know you're going to get pissed off about this, but I thought oh, I'd used up. all my magic pixie dust on my college team winning the national championship. I that's why I'm even more in denial that what we saw the cow or what we saw the Packers do to the Cowboys is real. So, like I said, they might turn back into a pumpkin next week in San Fran. They might throw punches and go to the wire with San Fran next week. That we said it about this whole season. They could suck if love sucks, or they could be a playoff team. Check on the ladder. They can let the moment t be too big for them. Or they can stand up and bow their back. Check for one. You check for wild card weekend. What are they going to do moving forward? And that's what makes this so exciting at this point. Well, and I don't want to sound, make this sound like it's disparaging because it's not. It's actually a good thing when it comes to sports. It's a really weird thing, but they're young and they're dumb. They don't realize the spotlight they're in per se. Whereas a guy that's a veteran knows the spotlight and they can let the spotlight get too big for them. So these guys aren't doing that. They're just living the moment. And it it's just I don't know. It, it's it's a it, it's a surprise for everybody. I, I I don't care who the most ardent Packer fan is to you know everybody not everybody, but you know a good majority, oh, they're already planning Super Bowl. But I don't think anybody in the world believed that they were going to go into Dallas and put up 48 points on the number two seed. I don't think anybody could have believed that. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree with that. And um, I don't know. We're just talking in circles right now because I think we're still on cloud nine. So I, yeah, I think we should put a bow still, on it. it. Yeah, we're still in disbelief. MVP, who you got tonight? You know, I, there's so many great players to put it on. There's two people I, I really want to do. I don't know if I want to split it as a co because I don't know who you're going to pick. Do what you want. I will adjust. So I'm just going to go with a single. I'm just going to put it on Romeo. Romeo deserves it because, like I said, it, it, the talk all season was, oh, well, maybe he's not even, you know, the best. Uh, you know, in the top three on the Packers right now. Well, he just showed he has the ability to be a top target in the league. I don't care what anybody says. He has shown right now with the little bit he was able to show last year, the ability he's been able to put together this year dealing with injury, that he can be a top target in this league. He may yep. not be the greatest route runner. He may not be the fastest guy. But damn, is he is is he dependable? Yeah, I Romeo was the guy. I was you know that that three pick stretch of um, Zach Tom, Romeo Dobbs, and JJ Enigbari, who it doesn't. I I didn't even know he realized he got hurt, but it makes sense why Preston was in the game at the end. Um, Lafleur in his press conference said it's not looking good for him, and that is an absolute bummer for me. But I'm just I'm I'm with you. I'm so glad that Dobbs made the most of his moment. He's a guy who, you know, people have done different degrees of, you know, yeah, maybe Wicks and Reed and Watson should be over him, but the people who are like, he sucks, cut him off the roster. It's like you do not cut fast James Jones. <laughs> like, and I think he has a level above that, but at its Yeah, I least, think he's a little bit above James Jones. Yeah, don't cut fast James Jones, but great pick. Um, I will go with the obvious one, but I will give proper honorable mention to Darnell Savage for having a good game, <laughs> making an impact play that turned that completely turned it into a whitewashing. Mike's um, really tried to go viral with his Darnell Savage love. <laughs> I'm the last one. Everyone else in this fan base threw him for dead. I am the last one. And Nick Nick Gregory corrected me. He said he has it either. So that's why I said I am the last one in the 50 United States who has not given up on Darnell Savage. Dude, 
disclaimer, I also think Dayton Jones will still be an impact player for the Packers. But... <laughs> Ricky but, Elmore's out there for me somewhere. I think he can come back. Damn it, we're going to get this pass rush fixed. <laughs> Montrevious Adams is playing good for the Steelers. <laughs> but no, it's Jordan Love. I mean, um, well, see, that no wasn't way. even my honor. Uh, that wasn't even the one that I was going with for Co. I was strongly thinking about giving it to Matt LaFleur just because, the, like we said earlier, this was probably his best call game. Well, Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Um, but, um, yeah, Jordan Love stepped into a spot where the quarterback, two quarterbacks, I know it's not the same stadium, but Favre could not win in Dallas. He would have sold who knows what to win in Dallas, and he couldn't. Rodgers, oh, and, and then to double the pressure, Rodgers absolutely owned any and every game in Jerry World. And for Love to come out and basically say, okay, cool. I got one better. And he kind of did um, over. And obviously, I know Aaron's always going to have the Super Bowl. But any game against the Cowboys in Jerry World in the playoffs, Love has matched that. Bettered it, honestly, I think. So um, didn't come down to a, you know, a, a Titanic in the background, Mason Crosby field goal <laughs> kick. So, um just a great game from Love. Absolutely, like I said, n at no point at all did the moment look too bright for him. I, I said it tongue in cheek. Whatever you do, Jordan, just do not throw an interception on your first pass. <laughs> a lot of people aren't going to remember, but <laughs> Rogers' first playoff pass was a too low and behind Donald Driver's out route that got picked off by the Cardinals, and so just already Love was on it and. He just had himself an incredible game. I know the, the final stats aren't like, you know, uh, oh, my God, a generational game, but he was in total control, and they were they were on cruise control after the second drive, yeah, after the they scored to go up 14 to nothing. The offense was just on cruise control the rest of the way. But to circle back to who you were also thinking of, let's give Matt LaFleur his flowers. He's probably never going to win Coach of the Year, they said he was just a product of Aaron Rodgers. And now he's not going to win it this year because it's probably going to be like Stefanski for winning without a quarterback or some shit like that. But Aaron or Matt LaFleur took all the punches, including from us at certain points of this season. He knew what he was doing. He knew that the shit had to be shoveled to get to the end of the tunnel. And by golly, he took it all, and he did it all, and he led his team. He called a masterful game, I thought, today. And I'm just so happy for LaFleur to, you know, obviously it won't end until he wins a Super Bowl, but I'm glad that he got that part of the monkey off of his back where it's like, yeah, I can win as an underdog without the Hall of Famer. I might have another one in tow right now that I get to grow old with, but um, I'm just really happy for LaFleur. Kind of is that kind of similar to the thoughts you had on Lafleur today? Pretty much, and, and like I was saying, I, this has probably been his best called game ever, even going back to his two years with Rodgers. So it, you know, I, I know we kind of joked about it, but this was his true all gas, no fucking break moment. So. I, I, it just really sucks that the soft defense allowed the – and that's where I was saying, you know, the soft defense allowed them to come back in because I think it really took away what the offense really did. Yeah. Because now people aren't going to remember the the game as much as they're going to remember the box score and, oh, well, that wasn't – you know, that wasn't the yeah. ass-whipping. The bed. fact that it was a 30 – Green Bay was – um, tripling up Dallas at one point in this game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, you know, just hope that the new, like I said, it doesn't sound too good for Kingsley in, in, in Igbari, but hopefully, you know, they get better news on him this week. Um, but we'll catch that on Wednesday uh, when we record on Wednesday for Thursday's show. Um, just wanted to do another reminder um, we're getting really close to the John Kuhn drawing. Keep following the show's Twitter account. Uh, Joe and I will continue to um, retweet the uh, drawing reminders, but make sure that you are... We are uh, officially uh, 39 away. We are creeping our way right there. 
we are we are closing in on it so um yeah just make sure get those follows in really appreciate those of you who are on board already um tell your friends tell your family <laughs> um we just want them to be along for the create ride create a us. dozen different accounts just so you can up your we don't care <laughs> we don't care if you go full silicon valley um anyone who watches that show if you haven't re hard recommendation it's a great show um but we don't care if you do uh those kind of things <laughs> to get our follow count up um we will just make sure that it goes to a actual person um, <laughs> who, who is able to respond to a DM. But that's going to do it. Joe, do you have anything else or are we going to put a bow on it for today? I think we're going to pretty much put a bow on it. Uh, just remember to keep checking the website for new uh, articles. You know, Mike will go through all this in the outro, but just remember, you know, drop us some comments. We're going to try doing some uh, Friday. Uh, I, I know we mentioned it last week, but we completely forgot about we it. For this week. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we're going to do some surveys on Fridays to find out what you guys want to hear and what you guys want us to cover on articles and whatever. Uh, you know, right now we're in house money, so we're going week by week on what our content's going to be. You know, we're going to keep bringing these out as long as there's games to be played, but after that then we've got to kind of think about what we're going to want to do yeah, yeah so or you know with the draft season coming up if you've got a prospect you want mike or i to look at or you know whatever then definitely drop us a a comment or something and say hey take a look at this guy what do you think of this guy and we'll be sure to put it into our draft stuff when it, the time comes but yep so that will do it for us. Do it for us on this fine wild card Sunday for the Packers. Again, the Packers in a final score that even that doesn't do enough justice to what Green Bay did to the Cowboys. Packers win 48 to 32 in Jerry World. They are the first seven seed to knock off a two seed in the playoff, the now expanded um, NFL playoffs. Just a good all around game from everyone, greater from other um, entities on this roster. And we just want to see how far they'll keep the ball rolling, but that'll do it. Um, this has been the Ohana Packers edition podcast. Follow us on our Twitter accounts. I'm at Kawano Mike. Joe is at Iowa underscore Joe 86. The podcast, again, the one you've got to be following to be eligible for the drawing is at Ohana underscore Packers. Please go check out our website, ohanapackers.org. You can find streams to all of the podcast episodes logged on there, along with all of our um, blog posts between the two of us writing, uh, Miranda and Joey. They're putting out new content for us every Newly week. Newly acquired Miranda Wilhelm. <laughs> um, so good on Joe for plugging that again but yep please please do give uh miranda and joy your full attention they're putting out great stuff for us um the drawing will go as we said once we cross 230 for the john coon picture signed picture and 523 for the signed job picture so please keep that's continuing somewhere to around here in this pile <laughs> continue to keep following <laughs> the, the show's twitter account um, please follow the show on your favorite podcasting apps give us a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying what you're hearing whether you're enjoying or not quite enjoying what you're hearing, please do give us comment, commentary feedback. We do appreciate that as we want to do everything we can to improve the content that we're putting out. And as Joe again uh, mentioned, we will put out a poll this week. Not quite sure exactly what the poll is going to entail, but we will make one. We won't forget again. <laughs> the Packers are moving on to the divisional round. They will face the number one seed San Francisco 49ers. Um, in Levi Stadium, I believe it's still called Levi. Whatever. I mean, it's not <laughs> Candlestick anymore. No, no, no. That's sinking into the mud. Oh, okay. <laughs> but hey, we're gonna see how long the party goes on for. Thank you for joining us. We wish you go pack go and aloha. Yeah.